Okay, we're going to look at creating three custom uh, wall types. Uh, the first one, I'm just going to modify uh, all four of these at once. Uh, first of all, I'm going to put that second dimension on it, and we're going to just confirm as we make these new wall types that the core boundaries remain the same and that our, our building uh, dimensions don't inadvertently change just because of a wall thickness. So I'm going to select uh, all instances and oops. what's going on oh that's a wood siding one I want them all to be those plus this I'm gonna make them all the stucco okay so they're all the same right now they're a stucco wall we're gonna convert uh, create three new custom wall types, all with stucco on the exterior finish. Uh, so I'm going to highlight all four of these and say Edit Type, and we're going to say Duplicate. And we're going to start out with the uh, staggered stud because it's the simplest. So stucco on staggered wood stud. Say OK, and edit that. The staggered wood stud is simply uh, two by eight plates with two by four studs that are staggered offset so that we don't have any thermal bridging and so the two by eight plate is seven and a quarter inches so that's the only change everything else is the same um, uh, I'm gonna change this though we have it called vapor retarder and the appropriate term uh, let's rename that is gonna be air vapor barrier air vapor barrier uh, for the inside. So okay with that. The uh, we could change this one to the exterior. Uh, it is an air infiltration barrier, but um, we would just refer to it more commonly as air barrier. Uh, we could call it sheathing wrap. We could call it uh, secondary air barrier but it is just an air barrier it's a polyolefin product let's just leave it as air barrier it's editable as we go along but this is our air vapor barrier this is a secondary air barrier again you can call it sheathing wrap or whatever you like so all that happened here was our wall got thicker because it's on a 2 by 8 plate so we're done with that we're back to our uh, go back to our standard wall which is stucco on wood stud and we're going to always use it as our main one. Oh, before we do that let's just check the boundaries. Look at the these are the new 2 by 8 walls right? Stucco on uh, oh sorry let's get them all. I want to make sure those dimensions didn't change before I just assume it. Where's our staggered stud here? Oh good. So look at that. The 25 and 28 didn't change. The wall just got thicker so that's that's the key difference there and if you look at the difference between that and the regular one it's just a little thinner wall not much of a difference yeah five and a half there and this one I'm just double checking my work oh I didn't edit that I thought I edited that seven and a quarter delete and say okay uh, oh maybe I cancelled out good so with the change of our wall types uh, to the new staggered stud wall it's just a thicker wall notice that the core boundary stayed the same and the wall got thicker towards the inside so we're losing space inside the house but our modular uh, dimensions are the same. Okay, let's go back now and highlight these walls, select all instances, and we're going to go back to a wood stud wall. You saw how they got thinner there, and we're going to edit those, we're going to duplicate, and this time we will do the uh, interior strapped. So stucco on wood stud with interior strapping. 
stucco on wood stud with interior strapping. So go in and edit that. The interior strapping is just another layer of wood. So we're going to add, uh, insert a component. It's way up at the top. And we're going to bring it down outside of the core boundary and uh, on the inner side of the vapor barrier. So this sandwich is the vapor barrier to that. In this category, it's wood strapping, so it's like the wood studs. They're just running horizontally. So we're going to use the same material, and that was the softwood lumber. So we just have two categories now with softwood lumber. One of them is five and a half. The horizontal strapping is two and a half, two, two and a half inches. So our wall thickness has gotten wider. We're going to insulate both of those cavities, but we don't note the insulation in the this construction. So that's it. We can say OK to that. Now let's see what happens. As that happens, our 25 and 28 stayed the same. Look at the wall now. Oh, to see this difference, to see the detail in the wall assembly, you may have been set at course view, and you don't see anything. So. I would recommend flipping to the fine uh, view setting down here all the time so you can see every layer. So you can see our stucco, our sheathing, our vertical studs, then our horizontal strapping, and then our gypsum board. Very good. One more to do. Let's do it. Uh, we'll take all of these walls again, highlight them all, change them back to the standard stucco one and then edit and duplicate. This time we're going to put it rigid uh, exterior sheathing. So this is uh, stucco on exterior insulation. Stucco on exterior insulation and then wood stud. Stucco on exterior insulation wood stud. So that's what we're doing. Okay, say okay to that edit this one and uh, on this one we're going to have to add some rigid insulation out here and we're going to lose the sheathing. What we're doing is in this structure is we are removing the uh, plywood sheathing delete and we are going to insert a product move it up it's going to be outside the core boundary now because it's not like wood sheathing. It's not part of the structure. It's going to go out here. We'll move it up again. We'll run our air vapor. We'll run our air air barrier over top of the studs, and then we can insulate above that. These are interchangeable. But this structure uh, is going to be an inch and a half thick. So inch and a half of rigid insulation. So now we need that category. Uh, this one, I. Uh, I don't see insulation in here at all. Go to I. Yeah, it's not there. So we're going to simply create a new. Go to the drop down here and create new material. So it's a new material. There it says default new material. We're going to call it, so rename it first. We're going to call it rigid insulation. Done. And then we're going to, uh, whoops, sorry, jump back in there find our rigid insulation that we just made. We've got our new rigid insulation. Now we need to edit it. So we go in here. <coughs> I'm going to leave the render appearance. I don't care about that. Surface pattern, there's no, no pattern for it in elevation, but there is in section. So we're going to put a cut pattern in section. Now I want this to be a line hatch but I don't want it horizontal. I want it to be perpendicular to the object. So I'm going to pick a vertical small hatch so they're close together. And I'm going to edit that hatch. And I don't want it always to be vertical. I want to have it align with the element. So when the rigid insulation is vertical, the lines are going to be running perpendicular at 90 degrees to it at all times. So if the rigid insulation is horizontal, the lines will, all, will be perpendicular to that. And I think 16th of an inch is fine. Say OK to that. And OK. And OK. So now we've got uh, some rigid sheathing. It's an inch and a half thick. Then our studs. No OSB sheathing. Now it is optional that you could have OSB sheathing in there. But technically our rigid insulation is taking place of that. The wood studs would now require a diagonal bracing. But anyway. That's all we need to say for Revit's point of view. Let's see how that works. 
say OK and OK. And again, our 25 and 28 stayed the same. And if you look at the detail of this, it shows the rigid insulation hatching going perpendicular.